So we got 20 minutes, and I guess you are being streamed. So the audience that is live streaming can also watch you. So why don't you introduce yourself one by one to both the audience here as well as the audience that is watching you live, right? A very quick introduction about yourself. So Victoria, start from that side. Uh, my name is uh, Marcel Khanani. I'm a group procurement and cost control manager for uh, Tactile Food Group. Uh, it's a leading group in the hospitality sector. Uh, we run around seven brands of uh, fine dining and upscale venues in uh, Dubai. Okay, very good. Next. Hi, my name is Abdul Hussain. Uh, I worked in an international bank for 12 years as a supplier uh, manager. Uh, I started my own company like uh, one year ago. Um, and yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Hey everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I'm Mohammed Al Salh uh, from Lebanon. I raised and born in UAE, and I start my journey in procurement in 2013. Uh, actually, in, in, in governmental entity, specialist in of entertainment and uh, sports. Very good morning. Myself, Vishal Sharma. I'm head of procurement and supply chain for Mohammed Hilal Group. We are here in Dubai for more than 14 years. And uh, we are into diversified industry. We are into hospitality, construction, retail, and manufacturing. Thank you. OK, great. So Vishal, since you have the mic, let me ask you the first question then. So um, not from your point of view as a buyer, but what is the buying behavior in your company from the business? How does the business buy in your company, if you can tell the audience? We have a certain set of process. First of all, we have a strategy. And after strategy, there is a planning. But the more important before planning and strategy, that is a culture. So we have that culture of excellence. And we do a strategy. We currently assess what are the current process, what are the gaps, how we can fulfill it. Then we prepare a roadmap and we execute that strategy. After planning, so we set a AMS in each and every legal entity. From there, we automate the system. So we set a par level in terms of goods, not in terms of services, because service is a different category. And from their goods, whenever there is a shortfall, automatically the ARS system, automatic replenishment system, they generate the reorder. And it automates the procure to pay system or through RPA technology, that is robustic process automation technology. It reduces the basically 80% man intervention and it's totally touchless. So this is how we are performing. Apart from it, we have certain stages where people do the contract management, vendor management. We can say it's like the category management. And definitely, there is a set of tools what we are using right now, as you said, that we shall how we deal with the supplier. So we don't consider supplier as the only supplier. We also deal them, uh, we also means like uh, feel them they are advisory as well so that they can advise us how to reduce the tail and Merwick spend as well and with the proper planning channel as well. So this is how we manage our account payable procure to pay systems. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So me pass over to Mohamed. What do you think? How is the buying behavior in your company and tell a bit about your company and how many buyers? Yes, uh, as I mentioned in the begin at the beginning, we are an uh, entertainment and sport uh, company. So we have everything customized and branded by us as a government and entity and, and, and live streaming and broadcasting company. So everything uh, we, we are purchasing normally is, as I told, is very creative and very unique and branded by us. So this uh, big difficulties for us. We are importing uh, most of the things and trying to do it, to do them in, in house uh, after pandemic, as 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 we mentioned, because the, there was an issue in China. 
So the process, uh, if you want to ask about the purchasing process, normally we have created uh, or, or uh, designed our, our, uh, our ERB system, starting from the requester, passing by his line manager, then it, it has to, uh, to be checked automatically by, by budget, uh, by the budget, if there is enough budget or not, otherwise it will be rejected uh, and, and returned back to the requester. Then it will come to us, and then after that we have to uh, compare the, 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 the prices uh, with our, our uh, approval hierarchy or our, our approval matrix. If it's above 10,000, we need to go through comparison. If it's below, we can go direct with our uh, uh, preferable vendor or uh, strategic vendors. So if it's above 10,000, we have to make a comparison. And there is a certain price, like uh, above three, 300,000, uh, uh, we have to, to shift it to our purchasing committee. So in certain living or uh, on certain value, we, uh, there is a, a unique and different uh, process of, of purchasing. Uh, then we'll move to, to, the, to, the, to the normal process of, of signing the purchase order after doing the, the comparison or bargaining or, or tendering, depending on the price. Also, one thing I want to add uh, in the contract, when you mentioned something about contract, actually, for my, my, my own experience or, or my own practice to monitor the, uh, the contract, I'm, I'm always uh, making a, an LBO against the contract value. That's to monitor the amount and to monitor the invoices of the, uh, of the, of the contract itself. So whenever we sign the contract, we put it in the system, uh, issuing an, an LBO with the same term of the, of the contract, and then we can monitor the, the payment. And in each and every invoice, we'll ask for a, a report from the project manager or the, the department head and that, that, that we can monitor the, the performance of the vendor and the, the payment uh, thing. Okay. Oh. Abdul. Please, so can we hear from uh, you? I know, so in your new company, is it? It's a personal, it? but it yeah. does not hang, have to do with the, okay. with the supplier and management. But uh, where I used to work, so I worked in HSBC Bank for 12 years, and the last, uh, last eight to nine years, uh, I was in a supplier management. Uh, the way we do buying is, is much easier than the gentleman uh, because as an international bank we have people coming to us you know, offering their services. Uh, but if, if there is a huge need for a certain vendor or certain product that we need to go to the market, then there is a certain criteria that we have to go through. It should be an international company or should be a, a well-repeated uh, company. So, uh, but if, if, a, if a vendor coming to me and offering a product, then I have to take the, the quotation and, and compare it with the, with the current supplier. And if there is something that we see uh, it's good to go for a new customer, then it should be with everyone's uh, approvals. And seeing that services, if the services are, are well and good, then you know, it's, it's good to go with the new vendors. But if the prices are same, but it's that there is a little bit of you know, a discount, but the services are not uh, quite uh, impressing, then we, we we stay with the with the current vendors. Uh, if I can ask you, what was your typical, uh, how long was your vendor onboarding cycle like? If a new vendor did this supplier solicitation process with you, by when would they, if they got the contract, how many months or days or weeks it took? Uh, a quick, a quick uh, process, uh, just to get the the uh, the quotation and then give it to the uh, the, the line manager to approve. If the quotation is fine, you have the the, the right to pay. And then it goes to legal for document uh, or the contract drafting. And then if everybody agrees on the terms and conditions, then we can go ahead. It, it's, it's it's less than a month. Okay. Process. Okay. Thank you. Well, the mic. Being in the hospitality company with which has a fast pace uh, experience going from two brands to eight brands in five years, uh, we had to change a lot of SOPs, KPIs, and procedures, adapt uh, technologies that can uh, size the process, automate it, and make it more efficient. Uh, as uh, uh, fine dining restaurants, they have a lot of uh, a big purchase catalog of uh, market list items imported daily or bi-weekly basis from 
uh, Europe, USA, Canada, Australia, uh, South Asia, and so on. So the supply chain is complex here. So uh, we had to adapt uh, three products from Oracle, um, POS system, point of sale system, um, inventory management system, and ERP. Um, the point of sale system helped to um, study the forecast, check what our sales, uh, sales mix, uh, what are the highest selling items, lowest selling items, and based on that plan the demand, and uh, that helps us in terms of negotiations and finding the uh, key and strategic suppliers, so we could do uh, optimal deals for uh, uh, efficient process and uh, uh, optimal prices. Um, and the <coughs> inventory management system, uh, we had the, the vendor purchase catalog where there is a master list of all items and suppliers with their correspondent prices and that gets automatically updated by the suppliers uh, with two steps of approval. Uh, that helped us to eliminate all the waste and apply Lean Six Sigma strategies to um, eliminate the time factor, the uh, labor force, uh, and uh, many other factors. Um, after that, uh, in terms of procurement, um, uh, there is an Oracle product called uh, Symphony or uh, My Micros uh, that does the proper SOP for ordering process from uh, LPO to uh, uh, GRN or goods received note, then posting that in the system. Uh, so we will get the proper data for uh, this term. Then it's automatically migrated uh, to the ERP software, which is Oracle NetSuite. Uh, so there we can manage the account payables, receivables, HR, and uh, manage all the payments uh, effectively. Okay, great. So now you heard from these four gentlemen, right? What they had to say now, they actually said all good things about their procurement process, um, which is good. But I also want to ask you one more question each, right? So if you can think and answer to me in 30 seconds, not more than that, what is the biggest pain point you see in your procurement uh, function or in your organization uh, that from your perspective in your job? Um, other parties, adaptability to technology. Adapting to new technology? Yes. Lack of it or? struggling to adopt? Uh, it's emerging currently in UAE, so okay. uh, it's still not in full phase. Okay. Especially if you are dealing, like, in terms of contracting, like, uh, I have uh, done seven pre-openings, so the contracting part and tendering and bids, this is all standard, uh, then the consultancy part, but then especially in food and beverage, there are a lot of local suppliers that they still do do manual, right, right. and there is uh, paperwork and stuff. Uh, but right. we try to do sustainable, eliminate the waste, uh, like uh, be eco-friendly, eliminated the paperwork to 10%, um, uh, minimize all the type of phone calls, emailing, and, uh, and these type of things, and make it more automated and uh, software friendly. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, I, would I would say the same thing, uh, plus uh, because in our organization we have risk managers, so they are always the, the barriers. We can't adopt the new technologies, we can't adopt or source new uh, new vendors that gives uh, more services or, you know, uh, smart services because certain, you know, uh, risk assessment that they go through, then they don't want to go through other stuff. So we are still, you know, uh, uh, sitting in our comfort zone. Okay, and is the same across banks or only your bank you felt? Well, uh, this is what I see from my bank. Uh, it's something for years, and we have to continue doing it for you know other okay. years unless someone opens to the uh, to the new technologies. Okay. Yep. Well, I think that uh, our main challenges in in my uh, my domain or my own sport field or entertainment field is the rush orders. We have a lot of rush order, last minute orders in our in our domain, as I mentioned before, because it's a, a creative a creative area, and it's live st uh, streaming always, and it's a uh, live broadcast. So we need to be uh, on the time, and we have to meet the deadline, uh, and any mistake will be shown in, in front of uh, everybody, and a lot of a lot of uh, audience and a lot of uh, fans. 
Also, I have another challenge that uh, most of the product uh, is fully customized, and this will take long time and, and uh, very difficult to source uh, uh, a full customized, especially when the, when, the, when, the, when the quantity is not that much uh, big, when the uh, quantity is limited. So these are two big biggest challenges uh, which I faced during eight years. Okay, very good. And uh, Vishal, we got a minute or so. Okay, our major challenge is that we don't have such kind of procurement tool which can measure the proper accurate cap procurement KPIs right now. And we are looking forward in the future for the blockchain where I can make the smart contract with uh, Ripple so that we can do things like this kind of crypto asset and cryptocurrency as well so that we can do the seamless transaction. But there is no such tools which we are dealing with now we are in the stage with deal books to have those kind of procurement KPI which can measure accurately vendor and uh, like employee performance as well. Okay, Fine. great, very great point I must say. So yeah, thank you everyone. You want to say something? Yes. Um, like there are many international standards that need to be revised and updated that uh, face like it uh, reflects a challenge for the procurement department like IFRS standards, GAAP, or ISO, uh, they are not much uh, tech-friendly due to some internal controls and whatever feedback we get from uh, legal departments. Um, maybe they can adopt like some blockchain technologies to secure these transactions or some sort of uh, contracts. So there is a lot, of a big room of development that can be done. Okay, okay, very good. So we got a minute before we get into break and then we will have a 15 minute break and I request you all to be really back within those 15 minutes because we will be, um, again, I let Anastasia tell me the schedule but we have a session at 12.15, right? Yeah, okay, 12.15 we are live from Switzerland so um, I, I do remember that correctly. So yes, we can take a break now. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for the first session. And uh, thank you very much for the contribution as well. So why don't you give these guys a big round of applause? <laughs> very good. Thank you. So we'll see you after the break. In, uh,